Christmas Eve or the Alpine Shepherd by Charles Marie Steppens. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. There was a youth, a nursling of the mountains, untutored in the ways of congregated men. His knowledge he had quaffed from the pure fountains and the morning streams and flowery glen wherein his sheep he folded safe in pen at eve from the near heavens and the light of day the music of the jay and wren and else he knew not neither how to write nor read but in the life he lived he found delight no mother ever watched with quickening breath the varying struggles of his infancy to her the gates of life were gates of death no sister's sweet companionship had he to temper and attune his childish glee a father's was the only care he knew a father's untrained knee the only knee to which he came for knowledge and his view was narrow as the narrow valley where he grew when spring first touched the mountains into green the warm sun resting on their southern side and birds winged lightly to the northward seen he with his aged father as his guide would leave the sheltered valley and abide through summer in the mountains feeding there the bleating sheep until late autumn tide re-led them to their narrow vale to wear away the winter on austere and scanty fare and thus far from the never-ending strife of thought far from the eddying ebb and flow of peace and misery of death and life far from the human calm and joy that grow from friendship and the hopes and fears that strow the paths of men his spirit formed its view untrained by aught less pure than the first glow of dawn the water of the brook or dew of evening and the summer sky's untarnished blue and many a day he wandered forth alone beyond the limits of the meadowland and gained the topmost peak the first bright throne of day seeking in love to understand the things around him and to find a hand of fellowship in each least thing he saw and thus his simple spirit did expand until he felt spring up a natural awe towards these his kindred knowing not their law and hour by hour he stood beneath the shaggy rocks that rise in measured rows up to the sky that seems to softly rest its fleecy flocks upon them and forget the sensual tie that bound him to the earth for to his eye appeared more than the visible shape of things more than the thought of great or small or high or low faint echoes of retreating wings were these sudden to disappear as whisperings to move or speak the power was not his own he might have prayed had he e'er heard of prayer yet did his spirit worship and the throne at which it knelt rose through the trembling air and in this usurpation all was fair loving and lovable transcendent power breathes in the least of creatures everywhere here littleness lived not and every flower that breathed added a greatness to the passing hour unpraised to adoration of a power whose name is unfamiliar to his lips he lives reflecting on the natural dower of things about him and the autumn slips to spring and spring to autumn time strips the mountains turn by turn of green and white as drop by measured drop the water drips the youth turned homeward on an autumn night to find a frosty form its spirit taken flight too deep the wound for words or flow of tears there like a stony statue did he stand whose cold impassive face defies the years to work an equal change or with the brand of dissolution mar its mien no hand were sensitive enough to thaw the frost that bound his spirit more than to command that to return whence it had fled life lost her power a death in life that death could not exhaust calm was the night the moon fair on the hills but calmer was despair until day broke at last and melted up the frozen rills of life and then and not till then he spoke seeking his questionings in words to cloak 
what is this father holds thy dear lips dumb and is this death whose swift and fatal stroke i ne'er have seen save as it erst has come and led away a wandering lamb to martyrdom what is it that is gone that thou canst speak no more that thy fond eyes are cold and still which e'er as i came home were wont to seek my face where gone thy smile that used to fill my heart with rapture as i warm and chill led homeward from the pastures where the smile that taught me all i know of good and ill and love that i bore with me many a mile hid in my heart through mountain meadow and defile i thought i loved thee well but now i feel i only love thee half canst thou be near where is that other self of thee the real for tis not thou i see in this severe and rigid form only a vision leer but where the something that i cannot name the vision that i see no more nor hear that sparkle in thine eyes that went and came that force and warmth of love that thrilled thy frame is that too dead can life be lost in death and what is life and what is death and where is he that made them he that fused the breath into these lips i thought or dreamed the air one day upon its pulsing wings did bear insinuations of a power too deep to be aught less than everlasting air to all that is or has been strong to keep eternal watch o'er all that wakes or is asleep i thought and could it be only a dream i thought the mountains and the air and sky the trees the birds among the trees the stream all breathed a song of ecstasy on high i heard it melted into me till i became transformed within me as without was something more than human ear and eye alone performed their functions then a shout a chorus of a million voices seemed to wrap me about my heart leapt in me bliss and mystery i loved and felt that i was loved and more my soul grew boundless as the swelling sea encompassing the earth i did adore and grander than my own broad as the floor of heaven streamed love of all things infinite and seemed it must be so for evermore it was about me i was lost in it and must it like a dream into the darkness flit if this be so then must all creatures weep be there no power of love between the earth and man and man and sky then must ye keep with me continual mourning and no mirth for ever know but an eternal dearth of joy shall be your portion o ye hills ye fountains and sweet fields and birds and birth a mimic mockery then must the rills of heaven open wide and weep for her own ills he ceased and the sad sound of his own words struck maddening terror to his stricken heart a spirit led him forth and where the herds had fled for many a summer day the smart of his fresh wound choking his breath the dart firm in his side he flees by winding ways familiar to his feet yet does he start and like some guileless timid thing that strays his stealthy steps at his more stealthy shadow stays through winding dells whose silence is disturbed alone by the swift echoes of his feet or by the bank of torrents whose uncurbed and fitful fury to his ear seems sweet as rest and shadow from the noonday heat of summer sun he goes and in his brain the fever keeps apace with the quick beat of his wild steps a hissing hurricane of thought drags him on in the turmoil of its train evening came on and through the solemn aisles of a deep wood he wandered all the trees were bare and through the long winding files of rocks and gnarled boughs the plaintive breeze moaned sadly like those calm and piteous seas that break forever on a barren strand remote the wan moon rises by degrees and sheds its cold light on the lonely land and on the shepherd's burning brow and chilling hand the covetous hours run on daylight and dark 
until upon an eve the growing gloom slackened the fury of his pain the spark that lent strength to his languid limbs gave room to weakness and he swooned and like a tomb that night wind built with the sere leaves a couch for him he sleeps and on the loom of dreams young memory with fancy weaves about his heart her woof till it forgets to grieve his father stood of radiant face and form with consolation on his lips and bade him leave the uncultured wild and seek a place among the haunts of men then did he fade in the first light of day faintly arrayed the wood and mountains in reviving hope and daintily upon his leaf bed played he rose and in the waters that eloped from fountains bathed his brow then followed down the slope in many a narrow vale and deep ravine the slumbering echoes at his steps awoke and many a timid hare scared at a mien more innocent than her own the frail grass broke beneath her anxious feet of leaves of oak or sycamore with tender hands he made his bed at eve and oftentimes he spoke to his own questionings at last he strayed to a broad stream that yielded to a sinuous glade he finds an unmoored shallop by the shore whose chinked and withered sides can scarce sustain the weight of their decay the fragile oar he takes and glides out o'er the rippling plain swift flows the stream the night wind blows amain the boat like spirit craft before the sweep of spirit wind drives on in the blue main above alternately the sun and the wan stars keep continual watch beacons of an eternal deep it chanced upon the holy christmas eve he sought the shelter of a lone chalet a father and a maiden fair receive the way-worn guest in good old-fashioned way the eve is kept with rites unto the day to come in memory of the christmas morn long centuries ago a sacred lay the maiden sang and in the shepherd's lorn and wasted heart as the old man prayed a hope was born the ecstasy that he had learned from streams and mountains and the sun's warm light the expectation of his skyward dreams were realized to her sublimest height his spirit rose and by a mystic flight he stood once more before a sky-crowned peak again loving and lovable and bright the cloud caps drifting through the blue bespeak that love in it commune all creatures strong or weak and was it strange he prayed that night to die and was it strange the prayer his first was heard that christmas morn rose in a cheerful sky among the leafless boughs the slight wind stirred the morning piping of the last sweet bird greeted the day a peace was in the air and joy o'er all but never voice could word the unsung joy those smiling lips declare free from all touch of earth fair as the heavens are fair end of poem this recording is in the public domain Evening on the Ohio by Charles Maury Stebbins Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Evening on the Ohio The slow sun sinks beneath the edge of day Where earth and sky lie locked in fond embrace From peak and ledge the last light leaps a silent throng The shadows gathering steal along in dark procession up the hills on the kentucky shore and rocked upon a sea of waving green they glide still on and up to flee and mingle with a far unseen a fragment of infinity the silent river drops from rills that lie concealed beyond the veil of mystery that twilight weaves athwart the lessening intervail from earth to heaven and flows in peace more gentle than the wave of leaves a while the winds for respite cease and now a bark majestic rides out of the mist its steady light streams on before appareling the waters in a calm delight astern a little tremor glides along the surface 
altering the stillness of its placid mien calmly imposing and serene the craft unswerving passes down beyond the grove and harbor bar the shrouded wharf and silent town and in the distance faints away as faints the morning star or spirit to eternity a sacred peace reigns over all the scene and through the stillness comes the throbbings of the nature heart with magic power to purge away the dross of life until their fall the fleshy curtains from the soul and it released and dumb forgetting how to pray yet stands in adoration of the power that made it and a poem this recording is in the public domain in city creek canyon by charles maurice stebbins read for librivox dot org by nemo in city creek canyon childlike i lie upon the springing grass that rims the road along the canyon slope and watch the silver folded cloud caps pass in silent majesty across a sea of half transparent blue a purity so pure that its reflection makes the earth more free from all but truth and love and turns my wandering thoughts back to the happy day that gave me birth for so i count the hour that brought the dove of life infused into my limbs a length of days sufficient to behold this hour to contemplate these symbols of the power that raised to form these ever ancient hills and all with purpose and with pleasure fills were sufficient prize for living softly the green turf melts away to the low edge that hems the stream the sprightly waters stealing in and out among the many windings splash and spray the leaves that overhang in midday dream or spread the stones with silken softness shout and sing in ever varied melody and of their singing never weary gay and noisy in their unremitting glee they wander on as they've done forever the grape of oregon about the spot raise modestly their amorous yellow heads and blushing for its own deep loveliness amidst the grass the wild sweet william sheds its tender beauty or the wild sweet pea the buttercup or frail forget-me-not the wind relenting hovers with the bee for one short moment bending to caress their dainty lips and drunk with love of them loses itself amidst their fragrant fragileness until a thrill vibrate each lithesome stem beyond the stream a giant mass of rock rises far as the eye can skim the air and pillars up with many a massive block of ancient stone the vaulted arch of heaven silent and stern its wrinkled mien doth stare hard down upon me like a roman god across its furrowed features coldly run the characters of ages characters revealing deep how nature's works are done by her unnumbered ministers that were ere day was made a name and fashioned from the night ere life became on land and in the air in ageless seas the awful characters of time's mysterious and measured march through centuries strange symbols that foretell the future from the past the story of eternity calmly the day is dying and a peace that lives with nature only everywhere is breathed by the unseen spirits of the air the low blue sky enriched with many a fleece of snowy whiteness settles round the peaks a little closer that with jagged arms support it hushed too are the trembling leaves of aged tree and wanton weed 
fit charms for noonday be and evening whippoorwill the flowers bend their dainty heads with cheeks a flush to bid farewell to the faint day a while the old sun smiles upon the grass that rims the narrow marge with mellow ray clambers the rocky steepness to the edge that is the first to greet the seething dawn there hovers for a moment and is gone no voice of bird charms the entranced air and yet the very stillness seems to chant an unheard requiem to the day and there are strains more sweet by far than ever wind hath wafted to the ear from harp or lyre touched by a human hand a visitant unseen bears them upon her trembling wings straight from the ethereal lute of silence shrined in twilight shades of wooded aisle and spire and audible to the inward ear alone she breathes her deep mute music and the end and the beginning into one strain blend which is life love and immortality and a poem this recording is in the public domain the sky seems desolate by charles morris stephens read for librivox or talk by emma charlotte the sky seems desolate today the birds that fly across the gray an evil portent seem to bring to me with heavy flapping wing the piping of the wren is wrought with melancholy winds have caught the plaintive pulsings of the sea even the over-brimming glee of brook and spring is blent with murmurings of discontent the sun the old untiring sun seems weary of the task begun this morn and toils across the sky as if his pathway were too high or he had lost a friend or sought a too far distant end yet sergius sings with keen delight to him the day is pure and bright as ever day might be a gaysome minstrelsy reigns over all the very streets are redolent with flowery sweets like fields in may a happy chance befell him yesterday i bade a hope farewell End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Could I But Sing by Charles Maurice Stebbins Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Could I But Sing Could I but sing as the old earth has sung for centuries? Could I but catch among her wild ethereal melodies one note of minor chord, of those that ceaseless float through forest aisle in evening tinctured sky, or feel the pathos of a wave's deep sigh, or reach one wonder of a cloudlet's fold, one wonder of the tiny waves of gold that float above the far horizon's rim and fill the world up to its shelving brim one growing wonder of the smallest flower that e'er lent fragrance to a summer bower could i but catch one woodland strain from the wild wind that wanders through the plain with sweetest music for a lover's ear from dawning till the closing year or tell one beauty of the leaf of grass that bends to hear the mountain waters pass through time the liquidy should roll along and teach mankind the potency of song. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Harvest Time 
by Charles Maurice Stebbins, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Olson Fytak, Los Angeles. In Harvest Time It was a day in harvest time, and as I wandered through the fields of yellow grain, some softly waved beneath the mild caresses of the wind, some was in fresh lane swathes, and some lay bound in mellow sheaves. Oh, the mysterious work of time! Oh, the creative love in sun! Oh, the enlivening power in rain! Only a few short months ago, the seeds were scattered on the ground, the little blades sprang to the light, and grew, perfected in the ear. And now, the harvest fully ripe. I thought and wandered on once more, and found, stretched out to rest upon the prostrate grain, his scythe close by, the mower spent with heat and toil. His face was thin and wrinkled much, grey were his hair and beard with age, weary with age and toil, I thought, and at the thought my heart grew sad to live on this fair earth is sweet and youth is full of happiness then why must we each one grow old into the far-off skies i cried my eyes fell on the ripened grain and read reply because the harvest is better than the growing grain end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Oliver Wendell Holmes by Charles Maurice Stebbins Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Leaving thine outgrown shell by life's unresting sea Chambered Nautilus Weep, weep, yet wherefore should we weep? Why weep that yonder bark be quit, For such a voyage unfit to bear him longer o'er the deep? Why weep that with a sturdy oar A long successful voyage is past, And he has beached his boat at last Beyond the breakers, safe on shore? Mid storm or calm no flood tide swells Upon the farther shore of life, But into port with deathless strife Some wandering voyager impels with steady arm and eye serene not every sailor steers his bark with one clear star to quell the dark and guide him through the strange demise with tattered sail or splintered mast or with a piece of broken oar some struggling in the waves gain shore with pain but all put in at last then cease lament for naught has failed he lives beyond the reach of fate and not lies lone and desolate save the frail craft in which he sailed in the poem this recording is in the public domain autumn notes by charles maurice stebbins read for librivox dot org by monica washington on november second twenty seventeen atlanta georgia O oh, fair, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely autumn time, To clothe thy beauties in a fitting rhyme Were not so frail a task, For never spring, with all the mirth That birds and bushes bring, Was half so fair in dress, or form, Or thought as thee, in love, or minstrelsy. No fragile buds are bursting in the copse, No green clothes, the rough mountain tops, but crowned with might and majesty they rise in fellowship with closer bending skies the sun no longer fierce shines with a mellow ray more friendly than in may the life they live more deeply to be seen than when tis mantled in deceptive green that thrills from barren peak to flowery glen reveals relationship twixt them and men a bond to bind us to the earth that we have trod and lift us unto god 
The brook runs pure o'er its rocky bed, past the wild coverts whence the birds have fled, and calmly its contented shatter steals, more faint and far, in sweeter, swifter peals, unmixed with aught impure, and sinks into the soul, fleet as the waters roll. No sullen visions of a wasted life, no plaintive whisperings of a fruitless strife as one has lately muttered in my ear and no insinuations of a fear that life may ever end in death my heart receives from the discolored leaves all things breathe faith in immortality in love that ever was and ever is to be it flows from every song or sound that breaks and fruitful melodies that silence wakes and life and death and thought and sound and silence blend in one eternal trend. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song of Autumn by Charles Maurice Stebbins. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Olson Feitak, Los Angeles. Song of Autumn. I come on the wings of the south wind, on the wings of the south and east. I tarry in forest and meadow, and spread out my harvest feast. I am life, I am death and harvest, the soul of the summer and spring, the end of their budding and blooming, of the months and the years, I am king. My coffers are full, I give freely to the strong and the weak as well, to man and the birds of the meadow, the squirrel and fox in the dell. For mine are the barley and wheat fields, the apples of red and green, the chestnuts of brown on the hilltops, the fields of corn between. For me grapes in purple clusters hang low on the rustic vine, and orchards of pears and peaches their garlanded heads incline. I bring unto all a blessing from inland lake to the sea. I strew the highlands with plenty, the valleys I fill with glee. No dingle may lie so hidden that I do not spy it out. And fill with the wealth of my treasures each distant and secret redoubt. For all countries are my dominions, from pole to equator and pole and my coursers are swift as the lightnings to bear me from goal to goal my thanks are often but curses yet still do i wander on and gladly bestow my bounties till my wealth is vanished and gone then i flee on the wings of the north wind on the wings of the north and west and leave to the keeping of winter the lands that i have blessed End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sown by Charles Maurice Stebbins. Read for LibriVox.org by Rick of Las Vegas, Nevada. The fruit laden winds of the autumn blew, and two small seeds to a flower plot threw, then buried them deep on the lifeless ground, with all the dead leaves and stems to be found. Then the hoar-frost came in the sleet and snow, and over the garden did reveling go. But the seeds slept on in their rose-leaf bed until the winter was up and fled. And then they sprang forth in the morning light and drank their fill from the tears of night, till their young leaves swelled with the breath of spring as it filled the world in its wandering. One of them grew enriched with the dower and promise of being a perfect flower enjoying the blessings it each day won from the gentle rain and the patient sun the petals blew open at last to the air laying its beautiful breast all bare upholding its love to each panting breeze that lingered to whisper its tender pleas not a soul ever passed the flower by but felt the joy of its presence nigh and the bees that lodged on its slender tips instilled the dew from its lovely lips but there entered the garden a hand one day and plucked the blossoms and bore them away to cheer with their beauty and sweet perfume the weary hours of a sick child's room 
but others sprang up in the vacant place and filled it full with their radiant grace. Yet the plant gave cheerfully all it had to make the heart of the young child glad. A blessing to earth was this little flower, so pure and so gentle, so great in its power. As long as the summer gave to it breath, and then it folded its leaves in death. But, alas, the other and comelier seed developed to be but an ugly weed, all cumbrous and dank and worthless and tall. It thrust out its branches, unloved of all. It drank up the rain and the morning dew, and the sunshine out of the heavens blew. Yet it only cumbered the ground where it stood, ill-shapen and poisonous, void of all good. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love Lies a Cold by Charles Maurice Stebbins Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Olson Fytak, Los Angeles Love Lies a Cold In the cool garden closes Where summer and care have wrought beauty so rare Where the perfume of roses is spent on the air With a reticent glare the soft sunshine reposes On the bright blown flowers for hours upon hours not a breath stirs the willows that border the stream from their midday dream and the slow swelling billows are gathering each beam from the sun with a gleam on the sea as it pillows the shallops and skiffs beyond the clear cliffs but the day shall shiver and die ere a sound stir a leaf from the ground or a voice wake a quiver from the park to the mound save the baying hound or the tremulous river for love lies a cold in the castle old from the night till the morning from morning till night when the last lonesome light fills the sky with its warning of day's damask flight neither lady nor knight the frail flowers scorning shall pluck a red rose from the garden's close and the bright breath of summer shall pass into fall and the confident call of the busy winged hummer shall cease from the wall where the woodbines crawl nor the steps of the comer of the now dead days shall quicken the ways the grey gates shall crumble and turn into sand but never a hand or a finger shall humble itself to withstand the decay till it brand all the walls and they tumble and turn into clay for year and for day and the flowers forsaken may wither and die for the wind shall sigh and the branches be shaken but never a cry or a tear to the eye shall it startle awaken for love lies a cold in the castle old so the years shall wither by months and by days from maize unto maize and the sails flee thither o'er the watery ways from yonder bleak bays where the moon and with her the timid stars shine on the barren sea brine and from farther this story of love to the sun shall descend and none shall forget the old glory till the sand be run from his glass or the sun and the stars grow hoary and be not the lights of the days and nights but the castle and garden of days then long dead a while love was shed o'er the walls that guard on the west shall be wed to waste and each bed to a stone shall harden for love lies a cold in the castle old end of poem this recording is in the public domain at eventide by charles maurice stebbins read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. At eventide, the western sky in crimson dyed sinks softly o'er the earth's dark breast, 
shedding abroad a lingering rest at eventide. The shadows climbed the mountainside, one after one with solemn pace, as if aspiring into space at eventide. How listlessly the light boats glide, reflected in the gleaming mirror, while the lone heron hovers near at eventide. And ere the vesper chimes have died, the monk's low hymn, the chant, the prayer, rise trembling on the darkening air at eventide. The sated flocks lie down beside, the fold and their meek spirits blend with nature in the day's mild end at eventide. The brown bright thrushes sing and hide, a sigh is echoed from the hill, a star shines out, and all is still at eventide. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pegno da Feta by Charles Morris Stebbins, read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. I lay these roses at thy feet, love, content to lay them there. If only you may breathe their sweet love, or place one in your hair. But crush and bruise them if you will, love, their fragrance is more sweet. And bruised and broken they will still, love, lie pleading at thy feet. And so I freely lay this heart, love, a suppliant at thy feet. But if to crush it be your part, love, twill only plead more sweet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Time by Charles Marie Stebbins, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The clock of time has sounded from the belfry tower of space, its silent echoes falling, steal on with mystic pace. The clock ticks on, on ever, and the same quaint tick as before, and the leaves of the future rustle as they have done of yore. The future is but the present. The present is but the past, and that lies in the boundless always to live and last. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Poet's Prayer by Charles Marie Stebbins. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. O kindly nature, thou who sovereign art, and kindred of my being, bend to resign one jealous guarded mystery of thine, one simple token of thy favor dart amidst the longings of a wistful heart. O let me worship at thy inmost shrine, until I feel thy holy life is mine, and find in thee a glorious counterpart. Then shall my minstrelsy be for ever free, and all unheard I'll sing in solitude the rural music of simplicity, and mingle my faint pipings with the stream that chatters by, content if understood by thee and thine, unenvious of esteem. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet by Charles Marie Stebbins Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson over this brink the waters ever pour from healthy morn until thoughtful eve and through the lingering night till daybreak weave again the sunlight on the grassy shore in many a daring stream of swollen store where a small lake bounds eager to receive them to its breast and still without reprieve it whispers and the caverns echo more so tender nature do i long for thee although a thousand varied streams of truth i ever drank of thee from my first youth from brook and cliff from cloud and cyril sea 
still is my thirst too deep to satisfy and thus too deep it shall be till i die in the poem this recording is in the public domain expectation by charles marie stebbins read for librivox dot org by larry wilson sometimes i've seen from some far distant hill apparelled in the glory of the dawn when first she smiles upon the dripping lawn a little stream dropped down with many a rill of such delicious sparkle that a thrill transfixed my being and ere the spell had gone bound out beneath my feet and on where yawn the mighty deeps that not can drain or fill so i have dreamed ethereal dreams of what should be upon a distant day the future lending color to the schemes but soon too soon the visions died away a present unfulfilled and then at last faint murmurs on the ocean of the past end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of christmas eve and other poems by charles maurice stebbins